Have you ever wondered if the traditional education system is the best way for our children to learn and grow? Today, we explore the revolutionary ideas of John Holt, a remarkable educator, writer, and thinker who dared to challenge the status quo of our educational system. Babies come into the world extraordinarily curious, eager to learn, extraordinarily resourceful and competent at learning that they are, in the most literal sense of the word, scientists. They do exactly what scientists do. They, they use the scientific method in making sense of the world around them. And then they get to a certain age, which may be as young as three, but in any case, the age of school. And this process is turned off by adults who think they are now going to direct and control the learning of these children. Who, they treat them like an empty receptacles into which they are going to pour whatever learning they think they ought to have. John Holt, born in 1923 and active until 1985, wrote influential books such as How Children Fail, How Children Learn and Teach Your Own. His works, translated into 14 languages, continue to inspire educators and parents worldwide. Holt's journey began when he started questioning the foundations of the educational system. He found that the traditional child psychology often missed the mark because it relied heavily on animal studies and theoretical knowledge rather than observing real children. We've gone right to the heart of what, the, what one of the really big problems of the schools are and that is they think discipline means only somebody tells you what to do and then you have to do it. And there's nothing in there about an internal discipline. Now, any half-smart army sergeant knows that a discipline which base, is based on nothing except fear is not going to work. Holt believed that children are born intelligent and capable. Contrary to popular belief, they don't need to be fixed or filled with knowledge. They need to be nurtured and supported in their natural learning process. Let school be a place in which children can continue to explore the world in the ways that are most interesting and productive from the, for them. Let us give them help if they ask for it, answer their questions, put within their reach, put, make accessible to them as much of the world and its materials and resources and skills and people as we can. Let's delve into the historical context. The industrial era brought a shift in education, molding it to produce a homogeneous workforce. Schools became assembly lines, churning out students ready to fit into the capitalist machine rather than fostering individual growth and critical thinking. Holt criticized this model, arguing that it suppressed children's natural curiosity and creativity. He also questioned the rising number of learning disorders diagnosed in children, attributing many of these issues to the stress and rigidity of the school environment. It's mostly kind of administrative convenience that makes it handy to shovel a whole bunch of kids of one age into one room. You all use the same textbook and the teacher only has to prepare one lesson plan. Or, but it has very little to do with human growth or psychology or anything else. Even the schools themselves, when I was a kid 50 years ago, would never have talked about socializing as an important reason for school. No self-respecting educated would have thought of such a thing. School was for learning, not socializing. This is a this is a recent story that's been cooked up, mostly because it's so obvious that uh, not very many people are learning much. So a child, are you saying that a child will develop socially okay at home, even though he's away from kids his own age? And Well, but most of them, are. yes, I am saying that. One of Hort's most powerful contribution was his advocacy for homeschooling, or as he originally termed it, unschooling. He believed that education should be a natural extension of life, not a separate structured system. In learning all the time, Holt demonstrates that children can learn essential skills and knowledge without coercion or manipulation. He shows that parents with patience and attention can effectively support their children's learning journey at home. This book is not about how to help your child succeed in school. It's about recognizing that learning is as natural as breathing. Holt uses personal 
stories and examples to illustrate how children given the right environment will naturally learn and grow while holds ideas have faced criticism particularly for the lack of empirical research they offer valuable insights into an alternative approach to education his emphasis on quality of life curiosity and instinct motivation remains relevant today as we dive into the concepts of learning all the time we will explore how you can apply holds principle to create a more engaging effective and joyous learning experience for your children join me uh, in this journey as we uncover the wisdom of john holt and discover how we can transform our children's learning experiences stay tuned for the upcoming shorts where we break down his insights into practical tip for everyday learning just a short disclaimer here all my future videos are based on the notes compiled by brother nabil musharraf from the australian islamic library and of course the original book learning all the time by john holt i'm going to summarize important information from the book and present it in my videos to help others understand homeschooling thank you